My name is Andrew Bennett and I'm the Chief Procurement Officer at the Department of Education based here in Brisbane. I work across government agencies from a policy point of view on how we can implement the government's procurement agenda, which includes the Queensland Indigenous Procurement Policy. One of the reasons we do what we do is to support our schools and make sure they can do what they do, which is to deliver outstanding educational outcomes for Queenslanders. So when we come to think about that through the lens of the Queensland Indigenous Procurement Policy, it's about how we ensure that while we're supporting our schools, we're bringing to life and advancing the government's agenda to increase the participation of Indigenous businesses in the economy of the state of Queensland. By helping Indigenous businesses become part of our supply chain, not only are we getting good outcomes for our schools, we're also able to deliver great benefits in the community. An example of this is the recent establishment of a standing offer arrangement for the provision of ICT security services. Baidem, a Supply Nation certified business, was successful in securing a spot on that SOA and through that arrangement was able to compete for and win a number of contracts from the Department of Education. The flow and benefits of this are clear. Baidem employs Indigenous trainees and apprentices to create career opportunities for young Indigenous people and for them to learn about ICT security and to work within that organisation. Another way that the Department of Education supports Indigenous economic participation is through the designation of certain infrastructure or construction projects as Indigenous projects under the Building and Construction Training Policy. This requires the winning contractor to employ Indigenous workers and to procure from Indigenous businesses. A recently completed example of this was the $7 million Red Lynch State College Additional Classroom Project, which resulted in 29 Indigenous workers undertaking more than 5,300 hours of employment and over $230,000 in procurement from three local Indigenous businesses. To any Indigenous businesses thinking of getting involved with government, I'd say two things. The first is come and talk to us. Engage about the opportunities that are available because collectively, we're working across government looking to try and do more. We want to discover genuine partners who want to work with us. Secondly, understand what it is that you do well and be able to tell that story to us. You need to be able to clearly explain what it is that's unique about your organisation, what you're good at, and how that is going to help us deliver the services that we need to. One of the most satisfying parts of my job is being able to see us actually achieving outcomes and to see that we're making a real difference in the lives of Queensland people. For our department, the Queensland Indigenous Procurement Policy gives us the framework to leverage the purchasing power of the state for the greater social benefit. The wider Queensland economy benefits when we invest in First Nations businesses and the community controlled sector. Investing in social outcomes contributes to building a robust and connected community and a thriving economy. We can see this in action when we consider the employment benefits of Indigenous procurement. We know that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander businesses are more likely to employ Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, they are more likely to retain Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander staff and invest in training and capability. This grows employment outcomes for First Nations people. At an individual or family level, we know that having a job unlocks many social and economic barriers. Since 2017 in Youth Justice, we have increased our investment in community-controlled organisations significantly. For example, the On Country program was developed following calls from community for young people to access an immersive type cultural experience alongside structured therapeutic casework. The investment was quarantined for Indigenous community controlled organisations and as a result three new suppliers were attracted to our market, giving us the opportunity to hear from three new voices. This is just one example of the flexibility under the Queensland Indigenous Procurement Policy that agencies can utilise to increase procurement from Indigenous businesses. Part of our strategy in youth justice is to build a cultural ecosystem and this comes from procurement and investment. This is important and we've been working on this for some time, building local partnerships across the state. What we do needs to be culturally safe and culturally sensitive to the needs of our young people and families and engaging more in Indigenous suppliers helps this. It is rewarding to be part of the solution that unlocks barriers and makes a difference for individual children, families and communities. I think everyone should have the ability to access services that meet their needs. It is rewarding to work in Indigenous procurement, to work with the community and to develop and design programs and services across Queensland for better outcomes. 
It's great to see the economic capabilities of Indigenous people increasing across the state. This is what the Queensland Indigenous Procurement Policy aims to do. It helps to address the issues facing our lower socioeconomic communities and families by investing in a small number, only 3% of First Nations people in the state.